Okay, starting in section 2.2. With number 69, it says, determine whether each statement is true or false, and if it's false, make the necessary changes to produce a true statement. So it says, the set of one, two, three, dot, 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 to a thousand, has two to the one thousand, proper subsets. Okay, so first we have to determine whether this is a true or false statement. False. false. Why? Okay, so there's, yeah, and there's two ways you could have corrected the statement. So because you asked for proper, it says proper subsets, you would have to fix this by subtracting 1 from that 2 to the 1,000. What's the other way you could have fixed it? Instead of adding a minus 1 here. Well, we could have crossed out the word proper. Okay, and eliminated that word because there's two to the 1,000 subsets. So either subtract one from that um, number or eliminate the word proper. Any other questions on this problem? All right, number 93. Okay, so houses in Euclid Estates are all identical. However, a person can purchase a new house with some, all, or none of a set of options. So these include <coughs> pool, screened in balcony, lake view, alarm system, and upgraded landscaping. How many options for purchasing a house? Okay, so in other words, one of the ways could be having none of these options, just the house, okay? Or we could have a house with just a pool, or we could have a house with just a screened in balcony, or we can have a house with just a lake view, or, you know, each one individually. Or we could have a house with a pool and screened in balcony, or a house with a screened in balcony and a lake view, and so on.
So, in other words, if we think about it from what the homework standpoint is, what, what are we creating there as we come up with all the options? Subsets, right. We're, we're looking at all the different subsets that are possible. And so really, the real question here is how many subsets are there? Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five elements. Good, okay, so n equals 5, and the formula is 2 to the n, so 2 to the 5th does equal 32, good. So there's 32 subsets, and this is why it was, this part up here was sort of important, because they were telling you that you could have some, like one of them, two of them, three of them, all, which means you want to include the one that it's equal to the original set, or none. So none means that the empty set is an option also. So all of the subsets is what you want here. So you want that total number 32. And then from section 2.3, number 49. Okay, so you're given that the universal set is the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. That A is A G H. B is B G H. And C is B C D E F. And you are looking for A union C complement. All right, when you're working these problems in Math Excel, what I, again, I think I've mentioned this yesterday, the, what I recommend the most is having a pen and a pencil because you can write out all the sets in pen and then you can take pencil to make any scratches or notes that you have to make to, you know, for, to look for these other sets. And then that way if you have to look for more than one complement or something like that, you can erase what you've already done and your sets are still there. So again, order of operations is really important when you're looking at these types of problems. There are no parentheses. So the first thing we have to deal with is C complement. And so that means we want any elements in the universal set that are not in C. So if you take your pencil, and you say, okay, I'm going to eliminate B, C, D, E, F, because those are the ones that are in C. And then anything that remains is going to be in C complement. So A, G, H. Now, there aren't any other complements that I have to find, but if there were, I've made a whole bunch of scratch marks up there, and then, you know, if I, in my pencil, I can erase them and, and keep working and not get confused by what I've already done. So now we want to take the union between set A and C complement. And so, remember the union is to join them together. Now, interestingly enough, they happen to be the same letters, so that gives us the set of A, G, H. If we had found the intersection, would we have gotten a different answer? So the intersection of these two sets would have been what they had in common, and so it still would have been the same thing. So when the sets are equal, your union and your intersection give you your same answer. Okay, so this is the beginning of section 2.4. And so um, De Morgan's laws tell you that if you're taking the complement of the union of two sets, then that would actually be the same thing as taking the intersection of the complement of each of those sets. 
What do you notice about what's changed on either side of that equation? Okay, so I heard opposites, I think. Specifically what? Okay, so the union sign has flipped to an intersection sign. Yes. Okay, the parentheses are gone. And each set now has that complement symbol, right? It's as if you distributed that complement symbol. Okay, well the same thing is true, well a similar thing is true I should say. If you're taking the complement of the intersection of two sets, then that would be the same as the union of the two complements. So again, notice it's as if that complement symbol has uh, been distributed and the intersection has been flipped to a union. So De Morgan's Law is helpful because maybe you already know what the complements are equal to and so then you can just rearrange your operations so that you take the union or the intersection, whatever it is that you're supposed to be looking for. If you don't know what the complements are equal to, then it's probably easier to just leave it as parentheses and find your answer that way. Now we're actually going to prove that these two equations are true. And the way I've set it up on your handout, I've given you so much space. And so if you, that space above that three circle Venn diagram between the paragraph and that, if you want to cut that into four columns, then we're going to do um, four problems here in that section. But that, that Venn diagram is actually made for other types of notes, okay? So if you want to write this information at the top, or do you already have that on the, you don't already have this on your handout, right? Okay, so if you want to write this information at the very top of the page to give yourself more space to work out the problems. So the universal set are the letters A, B, C, D, E. Set A is equal to the letters B, C. And set B is equal to the set of B, C, E. And so we want to find each of the following. So the first thing that we're going to do, first column out of four, is to find the complement of A union B. So we're going to work these out without using De Morgan's Law, just as you see it. So you would do order of operations then, which means do what's inside parentheses first. And you want to first find A union B. So what are you going to do with the sets when you're finding the union? Put them all together, right. So looking at set A and set B, the union would be B, C, E. A already has the elements B and C. And then we're just adding E from set B. So now that we found what's inside parentheses, now we want to work our way out, meaning that we need to find the complement of this set. So that's step two, find the complement of A union B. And again, this is where it's helpful, you know, if you're using pen and pencil, because you've already written down the sets. And so now to find the complement, I want to eliminate whatever's in A union B from the universal set. So I'm going to cross out B, C, and E. And so the only thing that's left is A and B. So that's what my final answer is. So if I'm using pen and pencil, now I can erase the pencil marks.
and now do the other side of this equation. So De Morgan's law says that the complement of the union should be the same as the intersection of the two complements. So now we're going to work out a column for this one. Now there are no parentheses, so that means we need, now need to do each individual set first. So step one, find a complement. So again, the complement means that we're looking for what's in the universal set that's not in A. So let me eliminate the B and the C because that's what's in A. And so what we have left is A, D, E. So step two is to find B complement. Now notice I don't necessarily have to erase those marks that I made because B and C are also in B. So I do want to eliminate that, but I now also have to eliminate the E because B, C, E is already in B. And so the complement are the elements that are left in the universal set, so A and D. Any question on the complements? So now the third step is to find the intersection between these two sets that we've just made. So intersection means we're looking for what? What they have in common, good. What elements do they have the same? Uh -huh. So comparing A complement and B complement, they have what elements in common? A and D. And so notice that we have just shown that these two um, problems give us the same answer. So we got a final answer of the set A comma D for both of them. Okay, so now let's look at the other De Morgan's Law. And so starting with the complement of A intersect B. So again, the first thing you have to do is what you see inside of parentheses. So find A intersect B. So as we mentioned, the intersection is what they have in common. So that should equal B, the set of BC. And now you want to find the complement of this set. So eliminate those elements from the universal set. And so all you have left is A, D, and E. Okay, so that was the complement of the intersection. So now De Morgan's Law says that we should get the same answer if we find the union of the two complements. Now notice that we have already found A complement and B complement. We did that in the previous example. And so being that we already knew A complement and B complement, it makes this problem a lot faster. Okay, you already have this answer. You already have this answer. So all you're looking for is the union between those two sets that you already had listed.
So when you take the union between those two sets, what do you get? A, B, E, good, because you're just joining all the elements together. So depending on what information you have tells you which problem would be faster to work out. And it's up to you how you want to apply De Morgan's Law in this way. You're also going to see De Morgan's Law later in the next chapter in a totally different type of math. So it comes into play in a couple different ways. Now one thing I want to point out about De Morgan's Law is let's say Okay, let's say that she had the complement of the intersection between D complement and C. And if you wanted to apply De Morgan's Law to see what else this would be equal to, like what other combination of sets that would be equal to, remember it's as if you're distributing this complement symbol. And remember I mentioned last time that the complement is sort of like the opposite of the set. Well, think about what happens with negative signs, because those are the opposite of a number. If you're, yeah, they cancel out, good. So if you have the complement of another complement, then that brings you right back to the original set. So the complement of D complement equals D. This intersection is going to become a union, and then the second set should be C complement, good. Okay, so just in case you're asked to rewrite it in another way to show De Morgan's Law, you can recognize that, that a complement of a complement brings you right back to the original set. It's like saying the opposite of that set. Okay, this next part is not on your handout, but it's a way for you to visually see what's happening with this, um, with these sets. So if you want to write this, you know, on the back of your handout or, or on another sheet of paper, we can create a Venn diagram with this information. Whenever we're creating a Venn diagram, where should we begin? The middle, okay, the innermost part. So in that yellow space, what are we looking for? The what? The common elements, good. Okay, so what do A and B have in common? B and C. Now, when you're making a Venn diagram, this is when pen and pencil is also handy. Because I can say, okay, I already took account for B and C, and I put it inside A and B, as well as the universal set. When I wrote B and C in that middle, I wrote it in all three of those areas. So now, if I move to the blue area, is there anything else in A that I need to put in that, in that section, in that region? No, A is done. There are no more elements. So that blue region stays blank. So now moving over to the gray section, are there any additional elements in B that we have to consider? E. Okay, so we can write E in that section. And that means I'm going to cross it out because I've taken care of it. So I crossed it out from both set B and the universal set. And now I can move to the white space. And are there any elements left in the universal set? A and D. So you can write them anywhere in that white space. It doesn't matter. So now you have a Venn diagram. Now the reason I bring this up is because in some of your homework problems, you're asked to look at a Venn diagram and do these operations. So I want to just give you some more practice there. And so take a look at the same answers that we've already found. So A intersect B we found earlier to be BC, and the intersection of two sets is this middle region here.
It's what they have in common, right? The intersection, so it's where those two sets overlap. So this would be the region for the intersection of those two sets. Now part of your homework is that it's going to ask you to be able to create a shaded area for these types of operations that you're seeing. So notice that if you just need to find the intersection, well then it's that shaded area in the middle. Okay, if you're looking for the union of two sets, then that means you want everything that's inside of A or B. So you want everything in this circle as well as everything in this circle. So you're shading all of this region here. And so notice the answer BCE, which matched the same answers that you got before when we were working these out step by step. So if you see both circles completely shaded, then that means you're looking at the union of the two sets. Now sometimes it asks you to create the shading, sometimes it gives you a picture with shading and you have to figure out what operation is being done there. Okay, so this would be a picture of the union of two sets. Okay, so now if we look at the complement of the intersection. Now we work that out to be A, D, E, but visually, if you were to figure out what this was. Now we just discussed that the intersection would have been this region right here. So therefore the complement of the intersection is everything that hasn't been shaded. So in other words, The complement would have been what I just shaded in blue, and I could remove, you know, the red if I just needed to, to shade the complement of the intersection. If you're shading just that, then it's everything outside of that common area. And then if you're looking for the complement of the union, well, if you recall, the union was both of these circles and all of it was shaded, right, all of that. So therefore, the complement of the union would be the part that's in white. It's everything outside of those circles because it's the opposite. That's what complement means, the opposite of what you, you just looked at. Okay, so all of this area here would be what was shaded if you were looking for the regions that was the complement. So any questions there from a visual perspective on the Venn diagram? So the thing about 2.4, it's very similar to what you've done in 2.3 as far as operations of sets, but in 2.4 it wants you to consider three sets at one time. So that's what you have this Venn diagram for on your handout. We are going to identify what each region means, and what's really important is that you don't memorize the Roman numerals of each region because in Math Excel it'll shift the Roman numerals all the time need to really figure out what each region means, what it represents. First of all, label one. That region represents anything that's in A but not in B or C. So I'm going to give you a listing of each region that you can write off to the side. And if you do miss something, it's going to be summarized again in the final slide.
And notice the key words. In A, but not in B or C. Okay, so you need to pay attention for those key words and what that means. Does anybody remember what the word or that theory means? Union is correct. Good. So notice that nothing from B or C has been shaded because we didn't want the union of B or C. So just that region there. Okay, region two, it's what's in A and B, but not in C. So notice it's part of the intersection of A and B, but not the part that's also in C. Now, when you look at this in math Excel, it won't necessarily have Roman numeral one in the top right figure handout. But it's going to want you to say, well, what are these examples of the What's the point of what you're going to put region two and what is region two? And so they'll, they'll scramble the Roman numerals around. So it's not even sitting in the Excel. I mean, you could put it for your notes so that when you're, you know, because the more important thing is to know this area that's in yellow right here, like that area is A and B, but not in C, okay? So the Roman numeral for your notes is just for you to go back and say, oh, it's this area is what those words are. Okay, so region three is in B, but not in A or C. In B, but not A or C. Region four, in A and C, but not in B. In A and C, but not in B. So there's that word and again. So remember the word and means intersection. So it's what A and C have in common, but not the part that's inside B. Okay, region five. In A and B and C. So that is the intersection of all three sets. Uh, okay. So region six, in B and C, but not in A. So the intersection of B and C, but the part that's not in A. Region seven is the part that's in C, but not in A or B. Okay, so do we have all our regions covered? Sure, five is in A and B and C. There is one more space that we haven't talked about. Right, what's inside that box or is it what's in the universal set? But now the whole thing is in the universal set, but what's in, but the region eight here at the bottom is in U, but not in A, B, or C. So region eight is the space outside the circles, and that's what's in the universal set, but not in A, B, or C. Okay, so going to homework and tests, we're now in section 2.4. Okay, so notice that the problems are similar to what you saw in section 2.3, but in section 2.3, you only had to look at two sets at a time. So now notice that they want you to find A union B and intersect that with A union C. So you're using all three sets in your problems. 
And again, order of operations is what's most important. So your first step is to do what's inside each parentheses. So first find A union B. So what elements should I list inside of A union B? Can you guys see that okay? Okay, I heard one, two, three, five, six, and ten. Good, because you're joining A and B together. So you're taking all the elements you see in A and B. And then step two is to find the other parentheses of A union C. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, six, seven, and ten. Good. Okay, so everything that's in A as well as everything that's in C. So now the third step is to now do that intersection between these two. And you've got choices here. You've got, say, A, B, C, D is choice one, two, three, and four. I see the majority of people have choice two. Okay, before I click on it, because once I click on it, all the writing goes away. So it says this symbol right here that we were looking at at step three was the intersection. So the intersection, we wanted what was in common. And choice two or choice B is correct because that's what the two sets that we just listed have in common. Okay, so they both have a one, a two, a three, a six, and a ten. One, two, three, six, ten. Good job. Okay, so here we have a new set of of uh, sets. The universal set are the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Set A is E, F, G. Set B is A, F, G. Set C is A, B, C, D, H. And then just to write this a little clearer here, this is what you're looking for. I'm going to give you guys a second to see if you can work through this problem. So seeing what's inside each parentheses, we've got to work inside parentheses first, but notice that we have complements in there. So that really would have been your first step, is to find the C complement, and then in the other parentheses you need B complement. So we can start there. So looking for C complement, you want anything that's in the universal set that's not in C. So I'm going to cross out A, B, C, D, H, and so all I have left is E, F, G. Okay, so now let me erase those marks. And for B complement, I want anything in the universal set that's not in B. So crossing out A, F, and G leaves me with B, C, D, E, H. So now I can go ahead and find those intersections inside of the parentheses. So I'll give you another second to, to finish what's inside the parentheses if you haven't already. Okay, for the first parentheses, you needed to intersect C complement with A. Well, what do you notice about C complement and A? They're the same, so their intersection is going to be all of the elements because they have everything in common. 
So that first parentheses up here would be E S G. And now we want the other parentheses. So we're looking at C complement and B complement. So the red and the blue here. So what do they have in common? E. Is that it? Okay. So that second parentheses has just the element E. And now I have to find the union between these two sets. And what does it mean when we're taking the union? Okay, put it all together, join it. Yeah, whatever terms you want to use there. So joining these two together, we have a final set of E, F, G, listing all of those elements in both of those sets. Okay, so any questions on how that was worked out? So you have two choices. You're either typing your elements into the set or you're choosing that it's the empty set. Did we end up with the empty set? No. Okay, so first choice, we'll click inside of that box. And then you just type E, comma, F, comma, G. Right, that's what our final answer was? Excellent. Okay, so here are the questions with the regions. Notice that region 1, 2, 4, 5, you know, some of the regions are in the same spot, but they did scramble a couple of the regions that I had in the notes. So that's why I said don't get tied down to the numbers, more so the explanation. So in this problem, it wants you to find all of the regions that represent B union C. B union C. So what does it mean to take the union? Put it all together, right? We want everything from B or C or both, right? So in other words, we want anything inside of this circle, anything inside of this circle, everything that I've circled basically, right there. All of those regions from B union C. This would have been the same question if it said, which regions represent set B or C? So I want you to be aware that they, they might use the union symbol or they might put the word or in there and it's the same question. All right, now, you are not listing elements here. These are not elements in the set. They have just labeled the regions. So you don't need the curly braces around your answer. You are just listing Roman numerals. Did you have a question, Jason? Yeah, I was wondering why they did that. Region. Just because they, they want to make sure you understand what the regions mean, not that you've memorized the Roman numerals, okay? All right, so it doesn't matter if you type these in uppercase or lowercase. It's not going to mark you wrong for that, but I'm just going to put them in, in uppercase. So we have region 2, comma. I'll go ahead and do the one to the right, which is region 8. So V, I, 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 comma. In the middle, we have region 5, so V, comma. And then off to the left, we have I, V, and to the right, V, I. And then the last one is VII. Okay, everybody agree? I got them all? Good job. All right, so here, again, they've scrambled all the Roman numerals again. And they want you to find B intersect C. What's another word for intersection? Okay, what they have in common. So you're looking for what's in common to B and C. Okay, I heard six. And three, good. So notice that if you're looking for anything that B and C have in common, it's where the circles overlap, in other words. So those circles for B and C overlap 
in both of those regions. Excellent. And again, this would have been the same question if I didn't use the intersection symbol and what word could be here? If it's not that word, it would be and, yes. Okay, so it's the same question if they say what regions represent B and C. It means the same thing as intersections. 